about this before in other camps, um, and honestly, I love float passing. It's, just, it's fun, and it's not so effective. You know, pretty much, you know, most of jiu-jitsu were told, you know, to always pass with their hands. You know, a lot of passing utilizes our hands more than our legs. Okay, and uh, a lot of jiu-jitsu at all levels, a lot of us kind of, a lot of people don't know how to do, you know, you know, rub your head, rub your belly, pat your head kind of thing at the same time, meaning a lot of people don't know how to use their hands and feet at the same time. A lot of people just use either or. I use my hands, okay, then I use my feet, or I use my feet, then I use my hands, right? So with float passing, we're kind of utilizing the float passing game when pressure passing or speed passing is important, okay? Because it's just another way to enter a guard passing situation and transition into either submission attacks or into more pressure style passing. I'll always prefer a pressure style passing, okay? Because like for me, speed passing or a loose pass, you know, it's very hit or miss. You know, it's like playing a game of tag. Oh, I got you, you got me, you know, back and forth. Whereas with a pressure pass, I can really control the whole process from A to B, right? But again, you know, you'll come across guys that are super flexible they got really good guards, good guard retention, but their guard retention is good for the use of their hand, your hands, or when you're trying to pass with your hands. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna start utilizing our legs, okay? Now, um, I'm gonna use Oscar as my Uki. Surprise, he's here. He, he's actually competing in uh, EBI this Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so when we're playing, so ideally, when when I'm trying to pass, it's always going to be infinitely more easier for me to pass against someone that's on their back. If they're sitting up, it's going to be a lot more difficult to pass. They can move, they can move more, right? Now, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to force a very specific guard, okay? A specific guard for me being that I, can, I know I can pass it, okay? And it's typically reverse delihiva or half guard. If I could force half guard, I'm, or I'm, I know I'm gonna pass, right? So it's just gonna also kind of lead into my class tomorrow morning because they're both gonna start from reverse delihiva or slash half guard. So I need to get him on the I need to get him on the floor so I could either come in, step in, and push him on his back, or I could just pick his legs up and force a reverse delihiva here. Okay. So now what I need to do now, because being that I have his legs pointed in this direction, is going to be very difficult for me to fully pass to my left without having to worry about fighting his his uh, weapons and his weapons being his arms and legs. So I need to transition this into a headquarters position here, okay? Where my knees, if you notice, they're kind of doing this inward tilt like I'm, I got a pee, okay? So I call this the pee pee stance, all right? I don't know, gr do girls do this? No? Just guys? <laughs> all right, so guys, y'all get this, right? Okay, so from here, now that I have, I went to headquarters, okay, I come in, I redirect his knees in that direction. So I'm opening up this side for me to pass, right? So what I'm gonna end up doing is, I'm gonna staple this leg down. My right hand's gonna open up this arm, okay? My left foot is gonna hook, and I want an outward pressure with my, my foot here. Okay, because all I'm going to do is extend and slide it out. And it's easy past the mount. Okay, now for me, it's, I hate mount because I can't hold it very well. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to transition to knee on belly instead. 
Okay? So let's go this way. So I got him on the back here. I forced reverse LED button. Okay? I want to transition to the headquarters position here. And again, my knees are squeezing. Okay? Because I want to be able to control his leg. So if he starts opening his leg to the left, his right here, I can easily just shift and squeeze my knees together. Okay? I catch his wrist, I pin it, and I'm tilting my right knee towards the floor to staple his leg to the floor. I hook, okay? I kick out, okay? So the direction I'm kicking, I'm taking his ankle and doing this and straightening it out, okay? Not just going straight, I want outward pressure. On the ankle, I want that knee tilt and kick, okay? So when I'm here, okay, boom, kick, transition to knee on belly. Make sense? Pretty simple, okay? We'll start with that, and then we'll complicate things a little more. Anybody need to see it again? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you, like, is your base migrating towards that corner? Yes. Or are you more no, no, no. It's migrating towards that corner because I need my weight on my hands. Because if I if I shift, if I keep my weight too far back, I'm gonna have a difficult time switching my hips and trying to float. Okay, so my weight has to be on my hands. So when I, again, when I, so when I'm here, see I'm leaning forward. I'm here. Boom. Get slide. <laughs> yes. Yes, my left foot moves first. Okay, so when I when I transition, so I'm here, when I transition uh, to headquarters, I always bring my left leg towards my right, and then my right leg extends out, pinch, Staple, tilt, kick, knee on belly. Yeah? Let's go play. One, two, three. Okay, so again, when, I, when I'm here, when I force the reverse deli heba, okay, I'm stepping my right foot towards the back of that knee, okay? I have to anticipate that he's going to get the reverse deli heba, because if he doesn't, he's going to give me the knee cut. Because if he doesn't catch the reverse salihiva here, I'm just going to pass and go right in the knee cut. Okay? So, if he doesn't, if I step here, and if he doesn't, I'm going to slide his foot in there for me. Okay? So I'm just here. Come in. And then go right in the knee, knee on belly. Okay? So my hand, I'm trying to caress the leg. Okay, I'm gonna grow up in them. They're hairy, but they're nice. He's got, he's got a lot of cocoa butter or oil or something. They're really nice. Okay, so again, I'm here. Worst home. Yeah? Let's go play. One, two, three. Okay, so other ish, a couple of issues you might kind of come across. Okay, and and it's typically with the hook, actually getting the hook on the foot. Okay, so meaning when I get to this point here and I'm trying to kick, like, and find that foot. So there's a couple things that will prevent me from being able to kick, find the foot. One, you're not, you're, you're, you're kind of doing like a leg curl versus trying to kick yourself in the butt. If I bring my heel like this, like a leg curl, this is about as high as I'm going to get it, and there's about a good foot between my butt cheek and my heel. But if I turn it into a plyometric movement where I try to kick myself, then I'll always be able to hook it. Now, let me preface this. Do not do this while you're on your back, guys. 
will, you will kick yourself in the nuts. <laughs> not that I say, not that I say, I'm, no, what? Yes, nope, nope, <laughs> never done it. Never happened. <laughs> okay, now the other instance that I'll find where I'll have a hard time trying to find the foot is when <clears throat> I start to lean forward and his foot follows me like this, right? So if I can't bring this foot here because he follows me here, I'm gonna bring this foot inside, hook, Whoa. and go right to me on belly. Make sense? All right, you guys ready? <laughs> okay, so again, so I get him on his back. Boom, I, get, I force the, the reverse belly diva. Shuffle in, right into reverse, uh, the headquarters. Boom, I try to kick here, but he follows. Oops, sorry. Mm. <laughs> okay. So as he follows here, follow. This foot comes in. Knee on belly. Yeah. So boom. Cool. Question. Ready. Question. No. <laughs> You can ask me later. <laughs> What's up? You prefer your left hand on the shoulder because I was putting it on the mat and then now I'm Honestly, put it where you can. There's no right or wrong answer as to where you put that. Okay, you can put it on his shoulder. Like sometimes when I'm here, I'll grab this other wrist too. Or I'll come here. Or I'll come here. It just depends where it lands. Okay, then I try to bring it in. Make sense? Let's go play. One, two, three. Anyone struggling to get that foot between the legs? Yes. <laughs> um, what if they're freighting with that right hand? Mm -hmm. We're gonna, we're gonna address that right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who's your who's your partner? I, I guarantee, cause like four four other groups have the same issue. Okay. It's not the length. It's not flexibility. So if you close, stop right there. Okay. One, bring your right knee in between her legs more. And staple her, you want your right knee towards the floor and your right hand up higher above her head. So here. Yeah. yeah. Really, really over exaggerated. Now you're gonna tilt to your right. Oh. Now try to hook the foot. If she follows your, your leg, now bring it in in front of her leg. Yeah. So, okay. Yep. Yeah, every, guys, a lot of people are having issues with that, okay? A lot of you guys are keeping your hands too close to the head. Like I was saying, you have to over-exaggerate the shift in weight, okay? You have to shift the weight from your legs to your hands. Just like if we're passing with our arms, the majority of our weight's on our legs, right? Over-underpassing, double-underpassing, knee cuts, every speed pass, Toriano's leg drags, all of our weight is on our legs. We float passing, we have to flip it upside down put the weight on her hands, okay? So now, going back, <laughs> where, okay, so we tried the hook, couldn't get it, so we brought her heel in, opened, and went to the on belly, yeah? So what happens if we can't get our foot in there? Because of that arm, okay? So, um, again, I'm here, boom. Cool. And keep it, right? So all I'm gonna do is my left leg is just gonna kick back and kick and just switch my hips. I'm just gonna fold the hips. Okay? So again, Uki, partner on the bottom. Really try to lift it. Don't let him hook it. This arm is framing, trying to keep that other leg from coming in. 
Okay, you have to make it realistic, guys. Okay, if you're not realistic, it's not gonna work. Okay, so again, we, we get here. Okay, I'm trying to get the hook, boom. I'm trying to come in, can't get any, block my arm, my leg, whatever. Okay, so actively hook, lift the hook. Yeah, here. And just slide right into side control. Okay, I'm just rolling off that leg. Yeah, that answer your question. Make sense, guys? Pretty easy. So again, actively lift that hook. Because if you're if you're not, okay, if you're being lazy with that hook, okay, I'm here. I try this. He lifts. I try to bring this in. Right, he's blocking. But if you're being lazy with that hook. Sorry. Make sense? So be a good be a good uki. Be a good partner, be realistic. Keep that hook active between your legs. Why why uh if, if you can't hook immediately, why wouldn't you just roll like why wouldn't you just spam the roll as opposed to like trying to work your heel to the inside? What do you mean? Uh, like, so the, the, the third option is yeah. blocking and roll over. Yeah. Why wouldn't you just do that anyway? Like, even you could. You could. Now the only other reason why is because maybe they're not, they're keeping that knee tight for their body, right? So if you try to hip switch, you might just rack your nuts on their knee. So that is a high possibility, right? Whereas we tilt, you know, we're using our foot to loosen up that leg, right? So can we just go for it? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we could even from standing. We don't even have to staple or float pass. We could just go right into headquarters and just hip switch. But then again, like I said, that leg is a lot more active between your legs. And again, you just kind of run a high risk of racking your nuts. While you try to switch, and you might not get it. Make sense? Cool. Ready? Put? Yes. What did you do differently to get directly to the side <laughs> So no, because I over I re, I switched my hips. I kicked it back like I'm long stepping. Okay, so it wasn't like a, a smooth ride. It was more of just an aggressive pop in my hips and kicking my right leg back. And I just more or less used my chest and my belly just to slide down the side of his leg in the side control. Make sense? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's a good question, guys. So I could almost guarantee that if you're getting launched, your ass is too high in here. Okay? Because if I'm here in headquarters here, the further if I start tilting here, he okay, as my butt comes up, he'll he'll launch me. But when I'm sitting on it here, when I enter, I'm sitting on his foot, pinching my knees here. Okay, so if he does, and, and let's say he does start to extend and try to launch. As long as I actively squeeze my knees, I'm buying myself some time and an opportunity to just re-pump re uh, pump on my right leg or my left leg and just go to knee on belly when he tries to launch me. Make sense? But Right off the bat, just try to sit your butt down on top of the foot. Cool. Head ready to play? All right, let's go. One, two, three. That's good question. Okay. So, guys, what are you saying? When you transition here, he grabs the ankle like he like he's going for Dalahiva. Or no, like he grabs the ankle. Yeah. Okay. We're, all we're going to do is going to come inside, grab the wrist, pull it up. Break. And just do the same same pass. We're just here. I pull up. Okay. <laughs> Come around. Make sense? That's it. Okay. So now we're here. Oh wait, any other questions? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> At what point? I think she's talking about because you know how you smashed us down so we can, if they just switch their hips, you're going to pop, they can follow with that leg. Yeah. 
if you do it slow and if you don't rotate your body on the hip then yeah that's it's potential but the thing of it is what's happening is when as i switch my hips my hip is staying right here my left leg goes under this leg here well so basically what's happening is my body is pushing the knee that way so the only direction his leg will be able to extend is parallel to the floor now if i try to rotate and i land over here and there's and i'm doing nothing to keep his leg from pointing up then yeah he could easily catch my leg with the long step make sense yeah okay so we're, again so we're here again okay I force the deli reverse deli heva i come in Oh, I've got the pee, pee dance. I catch. Can't catch the foot. Can't catch that motherfucker. Just like knee, just knee cut to side control. And then you can take the hand and just start slapping him with it. Okay. Yep. Nope. So basically, I just did a knee cut over this thigh. So we have different options, okay? So one, okay, try to hook the foot, try to bring it in, okay? I could hip switch, but because he's actively hooking, look, I'm gonna bring my right knee, push his leg down, I get the underhook, and I slide. So long. Yeah? Ready to play? One, two, three. Nice. So anyway, a good quick tip. Like you want to get good at float passing and a good drill, a good tool to have at home to practice is get a somewhat deflated physio ball and try to sit on it. Try to put your knees on it, stand on it, knee on belly on it, and just play, okay? Because the, the, the physio ball, the movement of the physio ball is just about as random as a, a person on the bottom and their movement. Okay, you don't know which direction they're gonna roll, turn, twist, or flip. Just like you don't know which really direction a ball's gonna go. I mean, you could control it to a degree, but sometimes you can't. But um, but yeah, if you guys have you know have any more any questions, you know, we only have like what two more days of the camp. You know, let me know. Um, tomorrow morning's class is again gonna be um, same thing, upper reverse Aligiva slash half guard, you can apply the same mechanics, and it's gonna be no gi again, but it's gonna be on body lock passing, okay? So today we we're doing like loose speed, passing with a little bit of pressure. Tomorrow we'll be doing more pressure passing, okay? Um, but, got yes? Um, I know this is no gi session, but yep. like, does this change at all for the gi, or is nope. it still the same? Still the same, thing. yep. The only difference you really have to, um, uh, really consider is if they actually grab your gi pen instead of just posting. Make sense? Then I have to then I have to address that grip, pull it, break it, and then mechanics are completely the same. Your approach is completely the same, but again, all you have to do is deal with the grips. Cool. Awesome, guys. Well, thanks for hanging out. It was a lot late last class for the evening. I know you guys wanted to open mat, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, do a group picture. Thanks.